Hey YouTube, today we're going to learn how to bulk edit some product identifier information. As I'm sure you're aware, eBay has new rules set in place where you have to have updated UPC information, uh, brand, manufacturer part number, that kind of stuff. That needs to be updated by the end of February and it has a lot of sellers in a panic trying to figure out how to bulk edit this kind of information. Now I do have to say, unfortunately, there is no quick, easy method to push a singular answer for UPCs that does not apply to all of your listings. And this is set up on purpose because eBay, in theory, believes that we should have an individual UPC for every item that we're selling. So that was actually on purpose as a means to not allow sellers to just bulk push. It does not apply to everything. It defeats the whole purpose of trying to get UPC information. Um, some information you can bulk edit, uh, such as brand, um, size, things like that. I'm not really quite sure why you'd want to bulk edit that information unless you're only selling the same thing and it applies to everything, which would be, I don't know, maybe that's your business model. But in any event, I'll show you how to do that. A couple different methods. The first one being with the eBay bulk edit and relist tool, the bear tool. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to come to your active items. I'm using the new seller hub. It might look a little bit different than the page you're used to seeing. But basically, you go to your active listings, click on edit, select it, edit all of your listings. If you have more than 500 items, it would say select 1 to 500 and then 501 to 1,000, 1,001 to yada yada. It just keeps going in groups of 500. If you're not familiar with the bulk editor, this is what it looks like. It lists, you have a couple different columns here. You can customize those later if you wanted to. Um, you know, quantity category shows you this information. You could edit directly within these cells by clicking into the cell. Um, what we're gonna do though is we wanna edit in bulk. So we're going to select all the items. You need to have the items, the check marks uh, selected on the left-hand side in order to actually edit that field in bulk. Click on the edit fields column and we're going to do the item specifics. When you have multiple categories, it's going to default to the edit listings individually grouped by category. You could also literally edit individually. This would be a very tedious method, um, I feel, because you'd have to literally be inserting everything over and over, save and next, save and next, save and next. So you could also go edit listings in bulk. Um, it kind of groups them by category again, but you could change all four listing information. You could say change to and then switch it up, and go that route as well. You could do edit listings individually grouped by category. This kind of gives you a grid system. So it shows you all four items, but you could actually click into each cell and change the information that you have in here. So it really just depends on what it is that you're selling and how you're wanting to bulk change the information. You will notice that UPC is not a part of the item specifics, and that's because the UPC information is not an item specific, even though it shows up in that item specifics area of a listing. UPC is a, it's a separate product identifier. So that's why, again, there's, there's no way to bulk push does not apply to everything because eBay wants you to have individual information for that information. So if you, you know, you made your changes to here, let's say you changed them all out to whatever it needed to be, you could minimize and then maximize the other areas and make those changes throughout those categories. Some of your information might require uh, manufacturer part numbers. Let's see if I can find one that has it. Not a lot of mine require that. Um, let's try this. Hmm, there we go. So MPN. So you could put does not apply in here. You could also do it by doing it in bulk. It does not apply. But again, I don't really know necessarily why you'd want to do that unless you already had every other aspect filled out and you simply needed to push the MPN. Uh, manufacturer part number or MPN is considered an item specific which is why you find it in this area.
Now, if you're needing to change your UPCs, you can scroll until you get to the UPC column. If you don't have the UPC column showing, you'd go to Customize Fields, or I'm sorry, Customize Columns. You'd go to your available columns, find whatever it is. Let's say, let's say the said MPN. You need to click it over. You can't just highlight it. You actually have to select to move it over, and then you need to apply changes. The page will refresh with the information. Go ahead and scroll, and now you can see your MPN column. Or again, if it was, if you didn't have the UPC, it'd be the UPC. So for UPC, you cannot change it in bulk. You can, however, copy paste. So you could type does not apply, and then just you'd have to click into each cell and put does not apply, does not apply. And yeah, it does get very tedious. You, know, you can say does not apply in these ones. So it's just it's, it's over and over. It's repetition. Um, some folks have found that when they click into a cell and type does not apply, it looks like it goes in and they're just quickly toggling through the cells and then suddenly they'll notice, hey, this information isn't here. And the, the bulk editor um, on certain browsers, and it's not even consistent, sometimes it's on Firefox, sometimes it's Chrome, sometimes it's account specific per you know browser, but sometimes there's a lag between what you're putting in there and what the system can accept. So if you notice that you're putting information in but it's not retaining as you're quickly going down through the page, take your time, slow down. I know it's awful, but you'll want to go in, paste, click into the next one, paste, click into the next one, paste. And you're going to want to do it slowly enough that the page has time to click to, to keep up and can retain the information. So that's one of the ways that you can bulk edit the product identifier information. And I'll go ahead and show you another way in just a moment. Let's go back to our uh, summary page. Okay, so now we're back to the summary page. Again, I have the seller hub, so my view might look a little bit different than yours. But what we're going to want to do is go to the eBay file exchange tool. If you haven't used file exchange before, it's a spreadsheet software system. It takes a little bit of getting used to, definitely a learning curve to it. But if you're familiar with file exchange, this is what you'd want to do. So from the seller hub view, you can scroll down here to click in the file exchange with the older views. You can go through the account uh, tab at the top of the page, go down to subscriptions, click into file exchange that way. So when you're in file exchange, you first are going to want to create a download request because you're going to need to get all of those eBay uh, active item numbers because that's how file exchange figures out how, you know, which item you're trying to revise. You would go to download files. Under listings and records, you go to active. I would suggest changing it to file exchange, revised price and quantity. The reason that I suggest this is because if you have variations of items, this is the only uh, way to actually have a report um, that will include all of that information. And information such as UPCs, MPNs, that belongs on the child lines of the variations. It doesn't belong to the parent line. So you're going to want to do the revised price and quantity. You would leave it to all active items and click save. Uh, it's going to generate a report. When it's ready, you'll receive an email. You'll come to the completed downloads area, and you will select to download your report. All right, so this is what the report looks like. You can see the action is already filled out with revised. You see it skips a couple lines here because this is a variation listing. This top line here is the parent line. These are the child lines that actually include the variation. Um, I have custom labels on a lot of my stuff, so this is what this information is. You can see that this is the parent line. It's including all of the parent information, such as every single variation available. The child lines are what you currently have. So eight and a half of this color, 11 and a half of this color. Now some of the other columns um, that we skipped over, sorry about that. Let's go ahead and just get that smaller again. Now you'll notice that you don't see anything in here regarding um, you know, UPCs, MPN, um, product information, brand, size, any of that. Now 
the tricky thing is you would have to insert these columns on your own. So for UPC, you are going to want to go to your field where your field names are and you would select to type in UPC in all caps. If you had the UPC number, that's great. You can go ahead and type it in. Again, this is a variation, so I'd want to do it on the two child lines, not the parent lines. If you don't have that information, you're going to type does not apply. And the uh, capitalization is very important. It's uppercase D for does, and then not apply, it's both lowercase. With file exchange, if you're trying to update your custom item specifics, such as brand, that's where file exchange becomes extremely tricky. And the reason that I say this is because if you have an item that already has your custom, uh, your item specifics already filled out, maybe you have, like say this one for example, I know this particular item, let's just go ahead and bring that up. Oh, you know what? I copied the wrong information. Okay, so item specifics. I already have the style, material, wash, brand, size, all this great stuff. I already have this filled in. If you're using file exchange, and let's say that I didn't have the brand and that was a required item specific, so I needed to update that information. The way that file exchange does custom item specifics, it's going to be a capital C colon, and then whatever it is you need to put in there. C colon size, you know, that kind of thing. So anything with a capital C colon that's indicating an item specific, such as condition, or I'm sorry, condition is its own thing, but style, material, wash, brand, size type, these are all item specifics right here. Now the tricky part with file exchange is that if you are using file exchange, and a lot of folks do because, I mean, you can quickly edit thousands of listings just on a singular spreadsheet and upload it back to the site. Custom item specifics will overwrite anything currently existing. So let's say that I just had to update the brand on all my items. If I were to only include this column, this new column of brand, and I didn't reincorporate all of this other information such as style, material, wash, all of this would be lost. All I would have is the condition because that's the condition is a different area and brand. It, I would lose all of this information. So that's the tricky part about file exchange. If you don't have access to that information already in an easily accessible spot, like maybe you used file exchange to create the content in the first time so you still have that file somewhere where you could copy paste the information over, you're, you're kind of screwed basically because you have to manually replace all of that information because file exchange does not have a method to export um, that type of information, it doesn't have a way to export description, item specifics, any of that. So that, that is a lot of folks have lost information trying to utilize file exchange in this method and you, ha you really have to know what you're doing. Again though, I will say if you already have that information, it's just a simple matter of copying and pasting the information over instead of having to go through groups of maybe 500 items at a time and click into each individual cell within the bulk editor. Once you had your information in here, you know, UPC, brand, whatever it is that the system's telling you that needs to be updated, you would need to save it as a, uh, oh, I should mention, you always want to change the item ID, you need to reformat it to a number with zero decimals, and you'll need to do this before you save the file. I've mentioned this in other, uh, in other videos for you guys, but you always need to make sure it should be the first thing that you do is to reformat as a number with zero decimals so you can actually see the item number. It's not that numeric formula. If you were to leave it that, that scientific equation and you were just to save it like that, it actually uploads to the site with just a bunch of zeros at the end. It changes the number to the exact same number. It just puts a whole bunch of zeros, which is no longer a valid um, eBay item number. eBay can't tell what it is you're trying to adjust or change. It's going to kick back an error report saying, hey, this doesn't exist. And then you're going to have to go to your original download and hope that you can get the item IDs in the same place. It's just a big pain. So always, always, when you're working with file exchange, format item ID as a number with zero decimals. But let's say we've done that. We've gone ahead and saved this as a CSV. When you're in file exchange, you're going to go to upload files, browse, go ahead and select your file, and then upload. 
so those are a couple different ways that you can edit the information in bulk. Um, it really just depends on what you're most comfortable with. Again, keeping in mind, file exchange can be extremely useful. It can also, you know, screw you up three ways from Sunday. So it really just depends. I would recommend, um, if you're not quite sure what you're doing, doing the bulk editor through your active listings area and uh, try to get it that way. So there you go. I hope that that's helped you guys uh, figure out maybe a couple tips or tricks on how to bulk edit the UPCs and other product identifier information. I do wish you the best of luck. I still have to update a bunch of my listings myself. Um, but we do have until the end of the month before that change goes into, uh, you know, compliance. So we do have a little bit of time. Best of luck to you. Thanks for watching. Keep watching for more videos on how to update your eBay arsenal.